Imagine this you're sipping your morning coffee, casually scrolling through intergalactic Zillow, when you spot a listing that screams luxury for sale. Moon-sized space station. Comes with planet-destroying features. Minor exhaust port issue. Asking price. A gazillion credits or best offer. Tempting, right? But before you start applying for an interstellar mortgage, let's talk about whether humanity could ever build something as insane as the Death Star. It might just remain the ultimate fixer-upper in a galaxy far, far away. The blueprint, size and structure. The original Death Star is no ordinary space station. It's a moon-sized monstrosity, clocking in at an unbelievable 160 kilometers in diameter. For perspective, imagine the entire city of London, except instead of a bustling urban hub. It's a giant spherical hunk of steel just chilling in space. If you've ever struggled to assemble IKEA furniture, building this bad boy would feel like putting together a thousand flat pack wardrobes while blindfolded and floating in zero gravity. Let's talk materials. The steel alone is estimated at 1.08 quintillion tons. That's a one followed by 18 zeros. Wrap your head around that for a second. At Earth's current steel production rate of 1.8 billion tons a year, it would take us over 800,000 years just to crank out the raw material. And that's assuming no one gets distracted by TikTok or a galactic energy crisis. Even if we develop some futuristic material that's lighter, stronger, and somehow easier to assemble, the sheer logistics would still be mind-boggling. And who's going to build this thing? We'd need a workforce as big as Earth's entire population, probably working triple shifts with overtime just to stay on schedule. Imagine the HR nightmare of managing billions of humans, aliens and droids, all arguing over bathroom breaks and breakroom snacks. Union negotiations for a project of this scale would be nothing short of legendary. The Galactic Senate would have debates so heated, you'd need a second Death Star to host the overflow. Honestly, just the paperwork alone would probably take longer than the construction. And let's not even get started on the cost. A quintillion tons of steel isn't exactly going on sale at Space Home Depot anytime soon. Material Acquisition Earth versus Space Getting the materials for the Death Star is where things go from ambitious to are we out of our minds. Let's break it down. Transporting quintillions of tons of steel from Earth to space would make even Yoda throw in the towel. Each SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch can only carry a limited payload, and at $2,700 per kilogram, the cost would make even Jeff Bezos check his bank balance twice. You could pool the fortunes of every billionaire on Earth and still barely scratch the surface of what's needed. Sorry, Elon, this one's not getting covered by a Tesla stock surge. That's where asteroid mining swoops in like a Deus Ex Machina. Asteroids are packed with metals like iron, nickel, and even gold, just floating around in space like cosmic treasure chests. Take NASA's Psyche mission, for example scheduled for launch in 2029. It's heading to a metal-rich asteroid valued at over 10,000 quadrillion dollars. That's more than enough to bankroll a few Death Stars and still leave some pocket change for a galactic Starbucks. The idea is simple. Mine these space rocks, process the materials in orbit, and skip the whole pesky Earth-to-space transportation problem. The catch. We'd need to perfect asteroid mining technology first, which is like trying to build IKEA furniture with a pair of chopsticks and no manual. Oh, and there's also the tiny risk of accidentally hurling an asteroid into Earth, turning your Death Star dream into an apocalyptic nightmare. No pressure though it's only the fate of the planet at stake. Powering the beast. Energy requirements. Powering a Death Star is like trying to charge your smartphone if your smartphone needed the energy output of multiple main sequence stars. Forget plugging it into the wall. We're talking about harnessing levels of power so absurd, even the sun would blush. The infamous Superlisser alone would demand energy in the Ottawatt range, 10 watts. For context, Earth's annual energy consumption is a measly 18 terawatts. 
That's like comparing a flashlight to a stadium's floodlights times a billion. So what's the solution? Scientists suggest fusion power, the same process that makes stars shine. Fusion reactors, like the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor Project in France, are already being developed to generate energy by fusing hydrogen isotopes. Sounds promising, right? The catch. Scaling fusion reactors to Death Star levels would take centuries, maybe longer. We're not exactly powering this beast with AA batteries anytime soon. And even if we manage to pull off this energy miracle, there's another issue, heat dissipation. Without advanced cooling systems, the Death Star would cook itself into a molten ball of steel faster than a marshmallow in a campfire. Not quite the intimidating empire-defining weapon we were going for. So, until we figure out how to turn a star into a portable battery pack, the Death Star remains firmly in the realm of sci-fi daydreams. No pressure, though. Design flaws. The infamous exhaust port. Let's talk about the most legendary oops in engineering history. The Death Star's thermal exhaust port. This tiny, unassuming opening led straight to the reactor core and single-handedly took down the galaxy's most terrifying weapon. One proton torpedo and boom. All those years of construction, materials, and evil scheming gone faster than a stormtrooper missing a shot. So, why on Earth, or rather, in space, did such a fatal flaw exist? Was the architect moonlighting as a rebel spy? Some speculate the exhaust port wasn't a mistake, but a necessary evil to vent heat from the reactor. After all, without advanced cooling systems, the Death Star would have melted itself faster than cheese on a pizza. Real-world spacecraft face similar problems, relying on radiators to dissipate heat into the vacuum of space. But scaling up that tech to Death Star size, that's a whole other can of intergalactic worms. It's a stark reminder that even the most epic engineering projects can be undone by one overlooked detail. Maybe the Empire should have spent less on Darth Vader's dramatic cape budget and more on hiring a few quality assurance teams, or, you know, at least a second opinion on heat vent placement. Moral of the story, no matter how big or evil your project, measure twice, build once. Oh, and don't skimp on the QA team your galaxy might depend on it. Modern developments, real life Death Star technology. While a moon-sized space station still lives in the realm of sci-fi daydreams, real world tech is inching closer to bringing some Death Star-like features to life thankfully, without the whole blowing up planets part. For starters, directed energy weapons are no longer just something you see in a galaxy far, far away. High-powered lasers and microwave weapons are already being developed for military purposes. Just recently, Chinese scientists unveiled a microwave beam weapon capable of focusing energy on a single target, much like the Death Star's infamous Super Laser. Sure, it's meant to disable enemy satellites and not, you know, Alderaan, but it's still a leap closer to sci-fi becoming reality. And it's not just lasers, space habitats are no longer pie-in-the-sky concepts either. NASA's Gateway Project, a planned lunar orbiting station, is laying the groundwork for permanent structures in space. Meanwhile, private companies like Blue Origin are making their own moves toward off-world living. No, they're not planning space stations the size of small moons just yet but every big idea starts small. These projects show how humanity is beginning to dip its toes into interstellar engineering. Today it's space habitats and laser beams. Tomorrow, who knows? Maybe a mini Death Star that doubles as a luxury resort. Hey, if billionaires can dream of space hotels, why not throw in a cantina with a killer view of Earth? The future is looking bright. And that's a wrap on our journey into the wild idea of building a real-life Death Star. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more mind-blowing content and share this video with your fellow space dreamers. Who knows? Maybe together, we'll fund a Kickstarter for the galaxy's first luxury mini Death Star.